Hi there, welcome to my video. I'm sorry to say, but it doesn't look good. Keep at least some gold. The politically dictated lockdowns have caused tremendous damage in many economies around the world. They have brought the production and employment structure out of balance in quite a few vital industries. Green policy amplifies the economic pain further. The deliberate increase in energy prices will not allow the economies to simply return to their pre-corona setup. A major reallocation of capital will be required, destroying much existing capital in the process. All this is rather costly and a noticeable decline in people's standard of living is the inevitable consequence. On top of that, central banks have been pursuing an extremely inflationary monetary policy in recent years, as indicated by record low real interest rates and an enormous increase in the quantity of money. In particular, they have been monetizing government debt. The newly created money was used to fund government spending to support aggregate demand. The artificial stimulus funded by an increase in the money supply has in great part covered up the true costs of the economic adjustment required by the green policies, thereby reducing public resistance against it. The negative price shock resulting from politically dictated lockdowns and green policies, most recently exacerbated by the Russian-Ukrainian war, hits a huge monetary overhang resulting in a sharp and ongoing rise of goods prices across the board that is causing very high inflation. This means great pain for many businesses and households. For instance, firms' production costs are rising, lowering profits and consumers are forced to reduce their spending. High inflation distorts relative prices, luring entrepreneurs into making unwise investment decisions. Preventing the economies from slipping into a rather deep recession will require more deficit spending, and this will most likely find approval in political circles. As the issuance of additional government debt threatens to drive up interest rates, something governments do not want, central banks must continue to buy bonds and pay for their purchases with newly created money. This, however, will certainly add to the inflation problem and trigger significant social political backlash. Likely, such a scenario will sooner or later be accompanied by public protest and even unrest. Why not end the inflation policy and allow a deep recession as economies adjust to the new reality of a fossil-free economic system? The answer is that the existing fiat money system would likely collapse and, if and when, key figures such as nominal, nominal gross domestic product, nominal incomes and profits contract sharply. This would most likely be the case should central banks end their negative real interest rate policy and their policy of increasing the money supply. And this is how the great transformation paves the way towards a severe debasement of the purchasing power of fiat currencies. One of the biggest problems with inflation is that it provides an opportunity for governments to take action and further cut back what little is left of the free market system. For example, by imposing price controls, maximum prices for goods that are particularly scarce and minimum prices for, say, wages, and the payment of subsidies to ailing industries. While the government becomes more powerful, the efficiency of the economic system dwindles, resulting in a further deterioration of people's material well-being. And it also exacerbates the ultimate adjustment crisis. One can only hope that things will change for the better soon. At this point, however, many of the world's major economies have adopted a political agenda that will propel them into tough times, the full extent of which many people have not realized yet. Investors have good reason to expect that the purchasing power of the currencies will fall significantly in the years to come. It also seems likely that the revaluation of assets, stocks, bonds, real estate around the world will be considerable. Investors face the risk of great losses and, at the same time, chances for attractive, for attractive returns. It is an economic and political environment in which holding at least some physical gold and silver in your portfolio is prudent. The purchasing power of gold cannot be debased by monetary policy. What is more, gold does not carry a payment or default risk, as is certainly the case with bank deposits. 
purchased at current prices, gold and silver may well be viewed as insurance with a substantial upward price potential. Thank you very much for your attention. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, follow my channel and ring the bell.